For the last several years, it's felt impossible to avoid hearing about AI. Sometimes it's utopian promises of how it's going to make all of our lives easier. I think it'd be good to end poverty. Like, maybe you think we should stop a technology that can do that. I personally don't. Other times, it's fear of lost jobs, the spread of disinformation, and even apocalyptic scenarios brought about by these all-knowing machines. The development of superhuman machine intelligence is probably the greatest threat to the continued existence of humanity. It has the potential of civilizational destruction. But the last few years of rapid advancement in AI technology are not the only time in history that computer intelligence has captured our attention. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. Back in the 1950s and 60s, improving computer technology stoked fears that sound really similar to what we hear today. 60 years ago, as computers learned how to write music and even win games of checkers, what did people think that artificial intelligence would be capable of? We dived into Fortune's archives to find out. Let's go back to 1964. The moon landing is still five years away and computers fill up entire rooms, but the technology and its capabilities have steadily evolved since the 1940s. The term artificial intelligence was created by John McCarthy, a computer scientist and professor at Dartmouth College who organized a now historic workshop on the topic in 1956. And by the mid 1960s, computers were capable of playing games of checkers, making music, answering simple questions about baseball teams, naming shapes, and recognizing voices. In the midst of all this progress, the public's perception of artificial intelligence drove fears of mass unemployment and concerns over computers' ability to produce art and make decisions more efficiently than the humans that built them. And while this conversation played out in American discourse, Fortune's Gilbert Burke spoke with prominent computer scientists and researchers to get an inside look at their predictions on how AI would impact the future. Sharing his findings in 1964, with one simple question. Will the computer outwit man? Throughout his conversations, Burke heard a wide array of opinions concerning what computers would be able to do in the following decades. And some were very optimistic about how quickly artificial intelligence would reach major advancements. For example, Herbert Simon, a researcher at the Carnegie Institute of Technology, predicted back in 1957 that within 10 years, a computer would be crowned the world's chess champion, that it would discover an important new mathematical theorem, and that it would write music of aesthetic value. Contrary to these predictions, it took exactly 40 years, not 10, for a computer to beat a chess champion. And a computer was first used to help prove a mathematical theorem in 1976, nearly 20 years after the prediction. And although the first music composed by a computer was scored a year earlier in 1956, Burke stated that one of the moderate remarks about it is that repeated hearings tend to induce exasperation. Another expert with very hopeful predictions for artificial intelligence was Marvin Minsky, an influential early AI researcher who worked at MIT. Burke said that Minsky believed we were close to the threshold of an era that will quite possibly be dominated by intelligent problem-solving machines. Minsky also said that in 10 years, we may have something with which we can carry on a reasonable conversation. He even thought that if scientists work hard enough, they may have it in five. Well, Minsky turned out to have underestimated just how hard his colleagues were working. Just two years later in 1966, Eliza, the first computer chatbot, was unveiled by a fellow MIT computer scientist, Joseph Weizenbaum. Eliza's programming was modeled after a form of psychology called Rogerian psychotherapy, meaning that it would rephrase what it was told into a question as a response. Well, my boyfriend made me come here. Your boyfriend made you come here? He says I'm depressed much of the time. I am sorry to hear that you are depressed. Weizenbaum's original intention was to demonstrate the shallow limits of a computer's ability to hold a conversation by essentially just having it repeat words back to users. But in a twist fit for a science fiction novel, users lost themselves in conversation with Eliza, sharing very private thoughts with the one-dimensional computer and resulting in what we now call the Eliza effect. As a result, Weizenbaum changed his views on artificial intelligence and dedicated the rest of his career to criticizing the continued adoption of computer technology. But getting back to his article, Burke also heard from other experts who were a little more moderate in their predictions for AI. One was Arthur Samuel, a consultant to IBM's director of research and the originator of the term machine learning. In the 1950s, Samuel had successfully programmed a computer to learn how to play checkers and published his findings in 1959. 
But even after these accomplishments, Samuel was still a little skeptical about the computer's ability to surpass the human brain. Burke wrote, the limitations of the computer, Samuel likes to put it, are not in the machine, but in man. To make machines that appear to be smarter than man, man himself must be smarter than the machine. Researchers had been attempting to build computers as complex as the human brain for years at this point. But Burke noted that some experts he talked to thought the task would be way too expensive, saying, the total cost of duplicating all the brain cells and connections would come to more than one quintillion dollars or one billion billion dollars. And that's in 1964 dollars. But despite the fact that computers are a fraction of the cost that they were back in 1964, which has allowed computer technology to increase dramatically as a result, OpenAI is still looking for more computing power and a lot of money to continue improving their AI products. And Burke even shared his own thoughts about a computer's ability to generate new ideas, similar to a human brain, stating, Nobody has yet been able to program the machine to imitate what many competent judges would call true creativity. The computer's achievements in creative composition, literary and musical, are remarkable in the sense that Dr. Johnson's dog could walk on his hind legs was remarkable. It is not done well, but you are surprised to find it done at all. Coming back to the current day, it's clear that AI has evolved in a much different way than some of these computer scientists expected. Computers are so advanced that they're driving cars around cities and delivering takeout to hungry college students. Many of those optimistic expectations from Herbert Simon, along with those of his colleague, Albert Newell, ended up coming true over the last 60 years. Their thoughts on a computer's ability to generate art are especially insightful. With the rapid advancement in text, music, image, and video generators we've seen since the late 2010s. Burke cited the duo as claiming, the computer on its own could not just copy, but match such creations as a Beethoven symphony, crime and punishment, or a Cezanne landscape. It's true. AI technology is not only capable of writing books and making music, the technology can now make photorealistic images and even video. But something is still a little bit off. Regardless, as the public perception of artificial intelligence shifts, and the economic threats and ethical concerns surrounding the tech seem to become more and more real, we're left with Burke's somewhat foreboding words from 1964. The computer is here to stay. It cannot be shelved any more than the telescope or the steam engine could have been shelved. Precisely because man is so arduously trying to imitate the behavior of human beings in the computer, he is bound to improve enormously his understanding of both himself and the machine. This sort of work is producing exciting information on the way in which electronic brains can learn from past experience and improve their performances. The machine's getting so good at the game that it often beats Dr. Samuel, the American scientist who taught it to play in the first place. <laughs> 